online advertising ecosystem and Google, winner of the Big Brother Awards 2021. And Rena Tangens is the speaker. Rena is a co-founder of Digital, Digital Courage, a data protection or privacy activist and a co-founder of the Hexen, the um, well-known German group, and they are still finding new winners for the Big Brother Brother Awards in Germany, which is kind of surprising. And who is the winner of the 2021 award and the new category, which is called What Really Makes Me Angry? That is what Rena is going to talk about. Enjoy. Thank you. I'm happy to be here in Congress and talk about the Big Brother Awards again. The Big Brother Awards are a joint project and among the organizers is the Chaos Computer Club. I'm now going to say something about my organization, Digital Courage, was founded in 1987 when people didn't quite know what they should do with these computers and they were very expensive too and we started a, a regular event called public domain which has been the grassroots that our, our group grew from and the cc was involved in that too Digital Courage uh, had been working with only volunteers until 2006, and since and by then, since then, we're happy to be able to pay a few people so that not just people whose parents are rich or who have a lot of money themselves can join us. And we're very happy to have been able to uh, have some effect. And part of our work every year goes into the organizing the German Big Brother Awards. These are this is an international project. The Big Brother Awards, as such, they were started in the UK and by Privacy International. <clears throat> Big Brother Awards, of course, referred to the George Orwell novel 1984, where the Big Brother is watching everyone. And <clears throat> at the time, we were wondering whether the name should actually be taken on from the other countries too, because Big Brother, the image of Big Brother is evokes totalitarian states uh, surveilling everyone and Orwell in those days looked towards Stalinism as a role model. And we thought that's actually not far reaching enough because of the manifold options for surveillance these days. It's not just states that monitor us, but the commercial sector is very busy in monitoring. And uh, it was clear that this would become an extraordinary uh, thing as well. So we wondered for a while whether to call it a Huxley Award. Um, the Brave New World novel has a lot more about this consumer attitude, people that are happy uh, if they're supposedly their needs are fulfilled and wishes and they do all these things happily. But we decided against the name change because it is an international project and we wanted to be part of that. And not as many people know Huxley and this was not going to be a literary award, although we do like to organize readings against surveillance. The Big Brother Awards have been bestowed since 2000 by us in the city of Bielefeld, and we have a range of activists, uh, civil rights experts, uh, privacy law experts. The Case Computer Club is one of them in uh, personified by Frank Rosengard, Thilo Weichert, the former data protection commissioner from the northern German federal state of Schleswig-Holstein, now a member of da Netzwerk Datenschutz Expertise, um, data network uh, privacy expertise, um, Peter Wede, a very renowned industrial law expert from Frankfurt is with us. These are the jury members and the Big Brother Awards are given out in various categories. And uh, the, it takes the shape of a big gala every year. The winners are not that enthusiastic normally about winning. 
and they avoid appearing at the gala to accept the award, although it's actually a very nice uh, sculpture that they are given. But there are exceptions, uh, and uh, noteworthy and praiseworthy exceptions are Microsoft and Deutsche Telekom, and some time ago, Zeit Online, the news website. And the last award uh, I mentioned actually touches on what, where I'm, what I'm going to talk about today. What else are we doing? Sometimes uh, the publicity that we try to create through the Big Brother Awards isn't enough, so we need to apply some more pressure. So we organize the Freiheit Angst or English Freedom Not Fear rallies. And uh, every now and then we have to go to the German Federal Constitutional Court, uh, for example, against data, um, data retention, against an employment wages register. Okay, Big Brother Awards. In fact, the title of the talk has already given it away. Google has a role to play here. And it's not even the first time that they won this award. In 2013, they had one as well. You can all read on, read up on this at bigbrotherawards.de, and it's all in German and English, um, including all the award speeches. And this interpreter has translated some of those. And um, the award speech in 2013 uh, had a lot of original sources that I researched, and some of the quotes from the Google founders and the CEO at the time uh, were noted. And I would like to give those to you first to just get you into the mood, as it were. And this is what Parloon is going to do. Right. Now, original quote from Eric Schmidt. Um, I'm just seeking out the original. Um, if there is, uh, if I can't. Um, so Eric Schmidt's understanding of privacy on the net, the then CEO was, um, if you have something to, that you don't want anyone to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. A second quote. I actually think most people don't want Google to answer their questions. They want Google to tell them what they should be doing next. And we have the founder, Sergey Brin. We want Google to be the third half of your brain. And to make it a bit more concrete, Larry Page, it will be included in people's brains. Eventually, you will have the implant where if you think about a fact, it will just tell you the answer. Now, we can imagine that in a very concrete way. If I read a news item on the internet about the conservative politician recently died who uh, uh, was conspicuous for uh, corruption, connected with the state of Azerbaijan. And if you consider what is this Azerbaijan anyway, and you wonder, and you could then use Google Glass maybe and immediately find the Wikipedia entry about the state. You might think that that is a very practical thing, but I'd say that this is hugely dangerous because Google tries to stop you from thinking and wean you off thinking. And this kind of power is something that Google really likes. And Google really tries to make things as comfortable and pleasurable as possible to us and pretends to be doing what we want and wish for. And uh, that's what gets me to the recent topic. And that is something that we invented a new category for, which was what really makes me what makes me really angry. And I think you know this, all of you. Uh, you remember the feeling you go to a website and what do you see? A cookie banner. And about that, I'm now going to read to you from the award speech. Cookie banners, they're such a pest. 
You know this. You enter a website and bam, immediately this box pops up, terribly designed and covering what you actually wanted to see. And now you need to decide. Do you just want to get to this web page pick quickly? Then just click the large colored OK button. But if you take this your rights thing seriously, it gets complicated. I squinted, you read the small print, gray on white, and spent minutes clicking away everything that you don't want. And that is quite a lot. The 470 trackers, for example, at the German broadsheet Süddeutsche Zeitung. I don't want any of this is not even an option. And if you do the arduous work of manually deselecting each and every tracker, be very careful because the next friendly and colorful button says accept all and not save selection. That button is gray. But careful again, you shouldn't even click on that one because first you need to find the well hidden category called legitimate interest. In there, everything is set to active still. And again, you need to deactivate everything. Did you know that? And meanwhile, I heard that from the legal point of view, you can actually ignore this and just say save selection because if you ex because you should ha have to explicitly give your consent but which of these company would actually keep to those rules now these cookie dialogues uh, are of course designed according to the latest findings on human perception psychology and web design for ergonomically pleasing websites but the principle is to do the exact opposite so Important choices are hidden in the text flow, while the OK option is displayed as a big button. These choices are written in illegible colors and font sizes. The Accept All button is at the bottom right, where we would normally expect to find the button to confirm our choices. Often the left-right alignment of options is swapped. If I click where I previously clicked to deactivate trackers, there now is a central switch that will activate everything again. Super. And then there are linguistic monsters, complex wordings and multiple negations to maximize our confusion. This kind of trickery in design is called dark patterns. So they, dark patterns, uh, they could also rightly be called deceit, unethical or manipulation by design. If we are in a good mood and not in a hurry, we could regard it all as an absurd game, a dark pattern adventure. Will I make it? Will I make it through the maze and decline all the trackers? What are they going to try next in order to trick me? And once I got through the, to the other side, can anyone remind me which article I wanted to read? Oh, never mind. Cookie banners are not a game. They are miserable and mean. They steal my lifetime. This is design made to tire me out and wear me down. The intention is to make me give up and eventually click OK. And now, everyone take note. It is not data protection that is to blame. No, that's often thought and claimed by interested parties. No, these unnerving queries are by no means mandated by law. On the contrary, a large part of these cookie banners are outright illegal. In May 2021, the privacy organization Neub.eu that Max Schrems, the Austrian activist initiated, sent more than 500 complaints to companies using illegal cookie banners on their websites. And there could be a lot more. Thank you for that. And thanks to the members of the European Parliament, uh, the many people who joined in, Matthias Ebel, to the journalist, uh, uh, wrote a tool that uh, makes complaints easier. Use that, use the options to actually make these companies work, give them work so that these things stop. I would also like to thank the members of the European Parliament who started the initiative trackingfreeads.eu against tracking-based advertising.
Yeah. And cookie banners are only the most visible materialization of the ways we are spied upon on the internet. Um, so there are many more spying methods. The Facebook pixel that's included invisibly on many media websites and betrays our clicking behavior to Facebook. There is the browser fingerprint. Which, you, which many of you will know. Um, it uses information on things like the operating system. We use browser type, plugins, installed fonts in order to, to re identify us without the need for any cookies at all. What really what makes me really angry. You see this this waiting period that you often see if, when something is loading. Uh, do you know what happens in the background when you enter a website? Uh, uh, your personal profile is now being offered on the online advertising market. An auction for your attention begins. You are the commodity. This is called real-time bidding. It happens in milliseconds. Various groups of online advertising providers identify and analyze and classify you using your online profile, which is kept by even different companies. Say you are male in your mid-40s and you have a taste for expensive watches um, or um, the student who's just looked for a flat share online is now being baited with supposedly convenient uh, credit offers. So you see in this example, um, not just things that are positive for us, but also, um, but normally this is exactly where the foundations are laid to uh, drive us in. Now with real-time bidding, a whole ecosystem is actually wagering in real time bidding, trying to be the one to show you their adverts. A gigantic network of providers and other beneficiaries, and those who actually make the web interesting, all those journalists, um, content providers, all of, of all kinds, they get only the smallest pieces of the cake. What makes me really angry that are the people that shout, ah, but how can content be made available for free without advertising? Well, well greatest is some, uh, free is something different. Well, um, snooping and manipulation is going on, and um, the media that are um, producing that interesting content. Um, I am currently getting a complete wa a waffle from a mobile uh, <laughs> um, uh, thank you uh, fitting to the cake uh, I also want one at the door uh, at the next door <laughs> well the cake the add cake um, what um, um, companies uh, um, maybe in uh, media companies have been selling advertising space for a long time however until the 1990s they were actually able to keep the largest share of the taking for themselves and from that they could pay journalists photographers cartoonists researchers etc a proper wage um, Synthesis um media revenue is a free is in free fall, and um, because meanwhile fifty to seventy percent of the money spent by advertising customers that does not reach the publishers anymore um, or the content provide creators. Um, it is taken um, by the service providers and advertising platform platforms that have got in the way. And that's what you can see here. That's the development of um, the revenue from advertising um, from in the US. And um, as you can see, more money is spent. Um, 
but um, the publishers get much, much less, and Google and Facebook are getting more and more. And um, as you can see, there is a different change in power through money. And that, that's the money that doesn't reach the media anymore, um, but uh, which they don't like, but they still cooperate with Google. Um, to summarize, personalized advertising means the users are snooped upon and the media companies are starved out. What makes me really angry? Google now presents itself as a white knight and it announced um, Chrome, Google's own browser, will block third-party cookies from 2022. Big cheers from the internet and media. Google will rescue us from cookie banners. Yeah, but it's not that easy. But um, blocking third-party cookies in no way means that this will stop tracking and spying on the net. No, Google still wants to... No, Google simply wants to do introduce a new flock which doesn't actually mean flock, but FLOC, Federated Learning of Cohorts. And flock means the following. Um, we will be um, based on our browsing behavior, what um, Chrome stores always, the browser, um, Puts, put, um, puts us into a group in a cohort and saves that on our local computer. And um, websites can then um, ask for that. Uh, so our browser behavior will be analyzed. There are a lot of people and we are one of those. And you might think um, that you can run in this group of a thousand or five thousand people, but that's a mistake. But um, many of those people are also locked in, um, for example, in the Google or the Facebook conto, uh, account or both of them. And um, they can also be recognized by their browser fingerprint. So that information is then much more precise than before. The browser sees everything you do in the internet and it will be considered in the um, selection of the code. And that website um, can then recognize you depending on that um, things. So, Flock um, um, improves the analysis possibilities, but only for Google. Um, um, and that um, graph is important for that. The that's the part. Um, how many people have Chrome? And um, they have about 70%. And in Germany, it's a, a little bit less. In Germany, many people are using Firefox. And that's a good thing, even um, if you can critique Firefox. Yeah. Who who hoped that uh, Google protects us, that we can't be um, traced in the internet, who couldn't have seriously expected that. Um, because Google as a company finances itself to 99% from advertising. I wrote in Lodice, you, Lodice, um, uh, we rather um, trust that piranhas are going to be vegan Google uh, will be doing everything um, against uh, changes to that um, business. Uh, no. So we have to do something against that very clearly and hard. And um, a side effect um, to flock um, that is welcome to Google is that they are ousting competitors from the from the advertisement market, and um, 
Here you can see the main winners. Um, that's Google, Facebook, and recently also Amazon. And then maybe you have seen that there are ads on Amazon, and that's not often looked into, but it's also big business. And um, Peter Thiel, who um, financed Facebook and produced papers, and um, he wrote a um, book called Competition is for, La for Losers. These people don't want a free market, which is usually suggested. They want a monopoly, and that's what they are working for. Oh. So, to another point, which makes me really angry, that's how the corporation treat each, um, every one of us, how these um, regard people as a resource which they can exploit and whose personal experience they can own. The disdain for people, the ruthlessness and the intention to deceive, the, the scorn for paying taxes and for state infrastructure, and the contempt for le legal regulation. Sh Shoshana Zuboff has found a word for that, surveillance capitalism. This book is something I want to um, recommend to you. This is the German um, version, the translation. So, But if you can read the English version, it's better. So it's not only a single data leech, it's a whole leaching ecosystem. It's, this includes insurances that want to exclude every possible risk to themselves, the scoring companies that secretly rate us all, uh, determining our opportunities in real life, the lobbyists, the think tanks, the PR agencies, the law firms that make this disposition possible, and the secret services that, pro that profit from all and like to fish in murky waters themselves. Then well, came the big question. Who is going to receive the Big Brother Award if you're looking at this long list? To the cookie bakeries? To the online advertisement industry? To the big platform monopolists? To the na psychological nudging experts? And um, the the dark pattern designers, the profile peddlers, real-time bidding casino operators, the smart ones, unscrupulous ones, ha hanger-ons in the media. Um, it was a tough choice, but then something happened. Because Google basically nominated themselves. We don't um, know if it's human errors, the heroic deed of a whistleblower or an AI that had been sampling a digital truth theory or maybe loaded an ethics module. What happens? happened? The story goes like this. 10 US states, led by Texas, filed a lawsuit against Google in 2020. They complained that Google was abusing its market power to fix prices for online advertisement, farming in a motto forming a monopoly and manipulating auctions for advertisement space. Um, Google was claimed to be abusing um, without restraint its double role as an, as an advertisement platform provider and as a provider of ads itself, as well as its, ex its access to user data. Um, can uh, Ken Paxson, Attorney General of Texas, explained the image with a baseball image. Google is acting as pitcher, catcher, better, and um, umpire all at the same time. So Google filed documents um, at the US district court in Texas intending to prove their innocence. The filed documents were excessively relevant to the case, but not in the way Google intended, because the documents had not been redacted. So the really interesting passages had not been backed out. Um, a few hours later, Google noticed the mistake and asked to refile the, its documents. But it was too late. Some um, fast court um, reporters from the legal portal MLEX, um, they had read the unredacted versions and uh, quickly realized the treasure that had fallen into their laps. These documents described that since 2013, Google has an action platform 
um, Google as an actioning platform had been using its knowledge of previous actions, auctions to predict which offers would be just high enough. Um, so, um, so using Apple the second row, um, they were able to, I'm sorry, I've lost. It was now in Google's own documents that they were abusing their double role. And they um, were not only gaining an advantage on their competitors, but also pressing down prices on advertising. So let me repeat, the uh, users are snooped upon and media companies are starved out. So they were using its knowledge of previous auctions to predict what offers would be just high enough and they were using their double role to win these auctions and drive prices. And Google, what makes me really angry, Google has internally named this process Project Bernanke after Bern Bernanke, the former chair of the US Federal Reserve. This code name signifies nothing else but Google's license to print money, the sheer arrogance. But there is more. In 2018, Google struck a secret deal with Facebook, number two in the advertising market. The internal code name is Jedi Blue. In this deal, Google assures Facebook, its competitor, that Facebook are going to win 10% of the auctions that they participate in on Google's platform. How could that be assured in a market with supposedly free competition? This is how. Google delivers information to Facebook about internet users, which Facebook can use to uniquely identify 60% of desktop users and 80% of mobile users. This way, I'm coming to the end soon. Um, this way, Facebook knows for which users it will be worth to invest for their ads. And Facebook uses a procedure called header bidding that other companies prefer uh, and they assure in return that they will not use, will stop pursuing a rival technology, this rival technology. So if that is not anti-competitive behavior, then what is? But you were caught. And there are things that don't just make me angry, but also that make me hopeful others. And I put these on this slide. So the lawsuits and sanctions against big tech due to privacy and competition law violations are increasing. And we should still see that uh, the valid law is enforced and California, the state that is actually the state of the Silicon Valley has enacted a data protection law and that was actually stricter than the European GDPR. The New York Times decided that they, are for, that they should forego trackers and personalized advertising and they're actually increasing their revenue because they don't have to give money away to all these profile builders that sell users' data. The British Daily, The Guardian, finished its 2019 year with uh, because they're making money from donations by the readers who cherish their content. The EU is preparing two important laws, the Digital Services Act and the Digital Markets Act. And they're actually at the trilogue stage. Keep, keep that in your focus, please. And it's interesting that there is a bipartisan movement that's actually starting to curtail the might of the corporations. And Lina Khan was nominated for the head of the, or was, was elected as the head of the Federal Trade Commission. That is really hopeful. And a quick call, we will be awarding the Brother Awards again next year. So if you have interesting issues, please nominate them to us. You can do that in the RC3 world, actually, but also on our website, of course. And finally, I believe that this quote by Albus Dumbledore is really appropriate, and I think I'll just read that. <laughs> have your wafers are read it out, your waffles are read it out. The time will come when you have to decide between what is right and what is comfortable. I don't know the original for that. Thank you for your attention.
All right, and uh, thank you to the speaker for this. And all the introducing all this and me too, of course, I hate cookie banners. Right. Now, on to the questions and answers. We collected a few. Now, let's dive right in. What is the state of things regarding the uh, regulation of dark patterns? Are there any plans for that? Yes, there are ideas. And things are moving. Timo Wölken, the social democrat politician, um, wanted to actually ban all kinds of personalized advertising, dark patterns, as a ban on explicit, uh, on circumventing explicit consent by fooling people. That is something that the EU has included in, in their draft laws. And Timo Wölken, to add this, is a member of the European Parliament from the German Social Democrats. So we'll have to keep at it and we'll have to make the German government uh, apply the pressure and, and increase the pressure even because it's important, not just an issue that individuals are being spied upon, it's the whole ecosystem where media are deprived of their revenue and opinions can be manipulated, micro-targeting is enabled, which increases divisions in society because people are influenced into different direct directions and radicalized each in their own direction. So there's a whole long tail behind this. And uh, that's why it's important to tell the German government with emphasis that this is not a pro-economy pro -economy, uh, measure if, if dark patterns are still allowed. Um, adding on a question from me personally, I think I remember that the that you can actually report uh, cookie banners that don't have a deactivate all function. Is that correct, my memory? Yes, you can report this. You should complain to the individual company, and, and there's a tool called Tractor by Matthias Eberl, uh, the journalist uh, from Hofposten.de blog. You can, of course, report to the data privacy commissioners, the authorities, and make sure that these people are given some pressure. We can report that this, that this has been effective. There are now more cookie banners where you can actually decline or with one button, but some still haven't learned it, and we should make sure to give them some stress. Yeah. Thank you. Um, moving on with IRC questions, how about the measures that browser developers have put in against tracking? Safari has an anti-tracking feature by default, and so things you can use on mobile, there are various things, and what's the state of things there? Um, Firefox has done a lot too, um, but that's good. I would discourage you from using Chrome. I only use that in exceptional cases. Chromium is slightly un Google, but there are various variants, projects. Uh, Brave is another one. And with Brave, the thing is that the the approach is I think somewhat controversial. I'm I'm not decided on that one yet whether I really like it. Brave grabs the advertising space that any medium will have on their web pages and you so clears that space and then 
puts its own advertising, uh, if the advertising it, it organizes themselves in that same space, and they share the revenue between them and the users, they say, and the users then can decide where this should go. And you could say, okay, this is great. We can donate this to that fantastic blog, which they often read, but um, the medium that produces the content that I'm reading, where the uh, Brave in injects its advertising, these media do not receive anything. And that, I think, is a bit unfair. Um, I believe we need to really think a lot more about the business models here. But that is exactly what we need creativity for, rather than for the further refining of anti-tracking measures. Yeah, there is a, an idea from the IRC here that I'll just read out. Yes, please do. Um, a user booked uh, travel and um, he uh, got a lot of um, ads for that and um, he think he, he that roommate thought that he saw the trend and he was the first one of the trends and to protect those people uh, we have to do something more. And um, I tried to explain uh, my roommate um, something, um, but my roommate didn't, uh, but the roommate didn't believe him. Um, um, uh, so are there possibilities for not techies um, to um, explain it to them better? Of course, legally, but well, I I couldn't explain cookies to my grandma. I think it's best if you can show it how um, what happens if you put something um, if you want to buy something somewhere and accept all the trackers, which you can do on another computer, which is clean, and um, how you can then see uh, how the ads. Um, on other pages are starting to show up because they are thinking I would be interested in that. So I think um, showing that is always the best. Um, I also had something happen to me like that. Um, it's quite a while ago. The um, we wrote the German manual for PGP, and um, and we looked again, again, and on Amazon on what. Um, ranking place it is and um, I was on another people's um, computer who has an Amazon account to look into something else and then I saw uh, yeah here look the German PGP um, handbook which was shown by Amazon but um, it wasn't generally shown to everyone but it was um, only shown to that person because that person looked into it multiple times but hadn't bought it yet so it was shown at like this thing of the week because amazon didn't know who's at that computer so it's um you really think you know something and that's a general thing but and i can really feel it what that roommate um thought yeah. Yeah. Um. And now the question, like a check for the, like the tool from the cookie, uh, cookie banners um, complaint, and we are posting the link to the IRC chat. Um, I don't have it right now, but look to rufposten.de, the blog from Matthias Eberl, um, or otherwise look um, to the Kukets blog, uh, to the blog from Michael Kukets, where Michael Eberl wrote also an ar article about identity management and what you can do. And um, there you will definitely find the link. Yeah, thank you.
Uh, and another tip? A game? Uh, where you can try um, not to accept any cookies in that game. It's uh, getting always more complicated and there um, it will be always harder and if that's right then that won't be right and so on. And sometimes you can't see what you're clicking at and um, I played it and um, I didn't manage to decline every cookie and I don't really know how it um, how it's called it's something like terms and conditions.com um, you uh, f can find it below the big um, brother avoids Lodatio from Google there it's linked please play it um, and show it to other people and let other people try it and they will uh, um, become crazy thank you very much for the tip Interpreters in markets called terms and conditions dot game. Ah, they heard it. They found it out as well. And this interpreter has actually managed to decline everything, but only the second time, I guess. Sorry for interrupting. And directly below, there is a really nice video linked in which two women are um, doing uh, a play from the about the cookie banners uh, one of them asks um, the questions from the um, from the cookie banner and the other just wants to bake cookies and the other one wants to decline everything but she doesn't manage so it's a nice theater play it's great uh, may I also give a tip uh, another game is data dealer which is a little bit older so maybe younger people don't know it <laughs> so data dealer you can find it and there you can play some evil data leech and buy and sell um, data and it's really fun and you can get quite some insights and I think um, everyone should have tried that and you can also play it with your parents and family it's from Wolfi Christel um, from Austria. It's really great. Um, you change um, the perspectives you get to be um, a data lead. You have to think, how do I get the birthday um, of a person? Well, I can just uh, ha offer horoscopes online for free. Right. To the questions. I think that was everything. We have no more in the pet. Okay. There were. We are waiting a moment. Um, I have to tell you the thank you very much from the community, from the people, from the IRC, from the chat, and it was really great and. There were, um, and there was also a call, call for Rena for a digital ministry. Uh, I think I stay with Digital Courage. There's enough to do. But um, we are really like to help. You can call us. Our phone number is in the internet. <laughs> And um, who's interested in sources, I um, did a lot of work for the Laudat Laudatio. There are a lot of footnotes with original sources and uh, further um, links also below. So um, yeah, please look at the text. We have another question. Wouldn't be a solution um, to um, develop a browser um, who simulates um, um, a user which adds, um, which simulates a user which agrees to all the cookies, but the um, actual user then um, doesn't have a problem and the content creator gets all the uh, gets the money. Um, there are plugins already, but I think that's not a good idea. We should start with the root of the problem. There are so many other influences to other things. So for us at Digital Alkorusia, it's not only about just the um, single users 
we are in the internet, but also around the whole network, all the people who profit from it, those who um, wash the data in the in foreign countries, so it's legal. So um, insurance companies who make um, pro who prognose who do uh, um, talk something about the future, think how the future will be, and then uh, don't offer us some things. So we have to do think about the big picture and not just trick the sixth system. But um, yeah, hackers have fun with that. But we should look t to the bigger thing. We should hack the ecosystem. That whole thing is the right um, approach. The right um, thing. And we are currently looking into comp le competition legalities, which is tot not really complex and not our area of expertise. But there might be some um, people who could be allies for us because they want to have fair um, um, Well, because they want competition uh, for uh, not only for the pre for, for the big platforms, and there is a window open now where we can um, we, we should be. Um, many people say we can't do something in Europe um, because they would just do it um, somewhere else than in Europe, and we will have to a problem with them, but many people are um, um, uh, and jurists in um, the um, and US citizens say, why are the Europeans treated better than us? We want this kind of data protection law as well. That's what's happening now. And it would be good to see that we actually have an effect in law and that companies that act globally are not going to use various individual terms and conditions in various countries because they that's if they know that for you being customers they have to adapt their to UNCs. We should fight for supervisory authorities to be staffed with capable people, not just legal people, but also uh, tech savvy people. We should make sure that technology is shaped in a way that we have a choice and that we can choose privacy-friendly solutions. And as has been announced, we need, in the economic ministry, we need uh, a place, we need a support for open source, and we need a an autonomous infrastructure that is not based on open source alone, but also uh, is a freedom-preserving infrastructure that's not built on surveillance capitalism. That is what I would wish for, and that is what it's worth fight, fighting for. Definitely, I can only agree to that. We have a bit of time left. Let's wait for a few more questions. Um, one for me about the Digital Services Act and Digital Markets Act. What does that mean? What is the time frame when the law is in this trilogue thingy? And that doesn't really mean anything to me, I have to say. Yeah, so the trilogue, you can imagine that there are, you have the dialogue normally where two parties are involved and the trilogue involves three. The legal initiative in at the EU level comes from the EU Commission, the European Commission, and the European Parliament then uh, goes, they have committees who have uh, debated on the issue, they made certain positions, form positions, and, and uh, have gave, gave their positions. And now it is also being uh, debated with the Council of Ministers. And that's where the national governments come in, because they send their ministers into the council. So, and that's why it's important to have a new government in place and put, really put the pressure on them to uh, go promote the right positions there. Because the problem was that the German government always used to say, yes, we want all this great European 
data protection. We want to, to make sure that it's, it should be as good as the German data protection law used to be. That's what they kept claiming to the outside. But internally, in the council negotiations, the which are held in confidence. There are no published uh, notes from that. German, the German government actually always worked against uh, the privacy and tried to prevent the uh, general data protection regulation from being passed. And I hope that this double-faced game is something we won't get anymore with the new government. But of course, we'll have to look at what they're doing and fight that the documents about the uh, negotiations within the Council of Ministers are no longer kept in secret. I think that is very wrong. And we have to keep uh, with that. And again, a huge thanks to Jan Philipp Albrecht the, and his team with Ralf Bendrat and everyone, the parliamentarians who were responsible for formulating the, uh, the GDPR and the position of the parliament. This is a miracle of democracy, even though in many places we may be unhappy. But the fact that it just exists is, exists is fantastic. Thank you. into the insights there. And the time frame, uh, so in the first quarter of this new year, 2022, is when a lot of things will be decided. Let's see how much the negotiations will be going back and forth, but it will be worth to uh, try to influence people at that stage. The Commission, uh, here on government representatives in the council, but also the members of the European Parliament. And quite practically, we need support here. So people on the street, maybe. Sometimes we call for small demonstrations. Small can be quite effective. And it would be great if people would to support these calls and join us for these. We have a newsletter on our website that will keep people informed. And we have a form there where you can say that I would like to join a demonstration. Click on that and register your willingness to support us in that way, and that would help. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And as I said, a lot of positive feedback is in the chat. So again, from there, lots of praise and gratitude. And I think it's time to move over to the extended Q&A. I can't see any questions remaining from the pad, but let's wait and see who comes to the breakout room. And, uh, and if you only have an idea later, I'm not going to disappear. You can always write an email, call, tweet, use Mastodon, Toot. or come to our assembly in the world. Yeah. And don't forget, if there's anything that unnerved you recently that you found conspicuous, something you noticed in your job that you just don't think is right at all, nominated for the Big Brother Awards. We are looking at each nomination. We're researching the details. The next award ceremony will be on the 29th of April 2022, but we would like to have your nominations right now so we have the time for in-depth research. Okay. And thank you for your attention very much, and the great presentation and the questions, because that is not so easy, as I know from experience.